Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Marcus from MSEC Governance and we're a UK based cyber security company which specialise in the certification of companies to ISME Cyber Assurance and Cyber Essentials. In today's video we're going to be talking about the well known certification, the Certified Information Systems Security Professional or CISP, which is provided by ISC2 or IC Squared. More specifically, we're going to be talking around the eight knowledge domains that make up the certification. So we're not really going to be talking about the exam in general. When it comes to information security certifications, this is probably one of the most well-known certifications when it comes to it. This certification is right up at the top of the list when it comes to proving that you know what you know about information security and those related subjects. This certification, in my opinion, is generally aimed at senior level positions and not really penetration testing security researchers, stuff like that. So the CISP certification has recently been through an update as well. It was updated in April 2024 and it'll probably change again in the future, no doubt, just to ensure that the content is kept up to date in the exam and follows, you know, what's happening in the environment today. Now, if you'd like us to go into a little bit more detail about these uh, domain areas after today, do let us know in the comments below the video and we can, you know, expand upon those knowledge areas and release some more videos. Now that we know a little bit more about the certification, let's find out exactly what these eight CISP domains are. Well, a domain is basically a knowledge area that you must know and understand before you actually do anything. So the eight domains within the exam are security and risk management, which makes up 16% of the exam, asset security, which makes up 10%, security architecture and engineering, which is 13%. We've got communication and network security, which is another 13%. Identity and Access Management, or IAM, another 13%. Security Assessment and Testing is 12%. Then we've got Security Operations, which is a 13% for the exam. And lastly, Software Development Security, which is the final 10% that makes up this exam. So as you can see, the certification and its knowledge domains cover a wide area when it comes to information security. And you need to know quite a lot before you take the exam. So there's a lot of study to be put in place. However, in this video, we're not going to be covering the exam or what's involved in it, but stuff like that. But I'll add some links um, to the exam below the video so you can have a look at it and review it in your own time. But if you would like more information about this, do let us know and we can do some more videos for you. So let's get started with the first domain, security and risk management. This is one of the biggest domain knowledge areas that you need to know about and it makes up 16% of the exam. This domain covers information around the CIA triad or confidentiality, integrity and availability. When it comes to information security, this is one of the first areas you will learn when it comes to it. Then there's also security governance principles, legal and regulatory issues which relate to information security, so ideally data protection act and things like that. Then you've got IT policies and procedures and what you should have. We've got risk-based management concepts. And then last in this domain, we've got the ISMC squared code of ethics. So you need to understand what the exam's about. So the next domain is asset security. This domain makes up 10% of the CISP exam. And in my opinion, this area is a very important part, not just for the exam, but for information security in general. As if you don't know what assets you have within the business and what assets you're protecting and managing, how do you know what you can do and how what can you protect and secure and monitor? So this domain is based around the classification and ownership of the information and the associated assets within the business. You need to look at the, into the asset retention, including any end of life assets and processes, uh, stages of data life cycle from purchase all the way through to disposal. So you've got that whole life cycle there. You also need to look at data security controls and what are the handling requirements for assets. So, you know, so how are assets actually monitoring and protecting and securing that information? Then next there's security architecture and engineering. This domain makes up 13% of the exam. And in this domain, you need to know about the engineering processes using secure design principles. So you're going to be looking for security by design embedded into systems and processes within businesses, pretty much. Fundamental concepts of security models. Security capabilities of information systems, accessing and mitigating vulnerabilities in system uh, cryptography, including methods around crypto analytic um, attacks and key management practices. And then lastly, you've got security principles as applied to designing secure systems and um, facilities or secure sites and facilities. Then the next domain is communication and network security. This domain makes up 13% and is looking at the secure design principles for network architecture. Secure designing pretty much. We're going to be looking at secure network con um, components, secure communication channels, 
as well as the OSI and TCP IP models, or otherwise known as the Open System in Interconnect and the Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol models. So there's a lot to learn about there. Then we've got Identity and Assessment Management domain. This is making up another 13% of the exam. Here we're going to be looking at how people access things. So we're going to be looking at physical and logical access to assets, identification and authentication, integrating as identity as service and third party identity services. We're going to be looking at authorization mechanisms and the identity and the accessing provision of light, uh, the access provision on life cycle. Domain six is the security assessment and testing. This makes up 12% of your exam. Here we're going to be looking at the design, performance and analysis of security testing within the business and it covers designing and validating assessment and testing strategies. It covers the security control testing, collecting security process data, test outputs and internal and third party security audits if you have any. Then we've got domain 7. So this is security operations which makes up another 13% of the exam and it looks at how you in the day to day security operations are being embedded into IT functions. So here we're going to be looking at understanding and supporting investigations or internal audits, things like that, incident management, uh, requirements for the investigation types, logging and monitoring activities. So we're looking at firewalls and event logs and things like that. We're going to be looking at security, securing the provisioning and resourcing. We're going to be looking at foundational security operation concepts, as well as applying resource protection techniques as well. We're going to be looking at incident management disaster recovery, business continuity, managing of physical security and business continuity. Then lastly, we've got domain eight. So this is software development security. Now this makes up the final 11% of the exam. And here we're going to be looking for secure software development and applying the best practices. So off top 10, things like that. We're going to be looking at security in the software development life cycle from start to finish, security controls and software development ecosystems, the effectiveness of um, software security, as well as the secure coding guidelines and standards within your whole environment. Now, we've briefly covered the knowledge domains. There's a lot in there. We've been fairly quick going through this, but if this is of interest to you and you'd like some more information on each of these domains, comment below the video, express your interest in this, and we can work further through the domains you know, do deeper dives into each area like that and give you a lot more information about that. So I hope this has been informative for you. If you like what you saw today, please like the video, subscribe to our channel for more content like this, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.